All right, so welcome back. In this video, we're going to be talking about row echelon form of matrices. So if we have a regular matrix, let's start with the 3 by 3 one. We can fill in some numbers. 1, 2, 3, let's just say 4, 5, 6, and 7, 8, 9. So there we go. This is just a 3x3 three three matrix that is not in row echelon form. Basically for row echelon form, the leading, the leading term in each row has to have just zeros below it. So let's look at this. We could put this one, if we just change some of these numbers, um, uh, here we'll just erase this one, this one, and this one. So if these numbers here instead in fact were zeros, now this matrix would be in row echelon form. And what that means is we would be able to, well this would be the coefficient matrix and if we had the, if we wanted to make this into an augmented matrix or something, we would be able to solve this system uh, using back substitution like we did in the last video. So let's draw some other ones um, and you'll start to get the hang of this row echelon form. It's really important for solving systems of linear equations. Let's do another one. Let's say we have, I don't know, it could be 3, 1, Two, let's make this an augmented matrix. Um, we could have 0, negative 2, and let's say 8, and then maybe let's just fill this all with zeros. So here we just primarily want to look here at um, the coefficient matrix, and we want to make sure that this is in fact in row echelon form. So don't get away, don't get scared away by there's a row of zeros here. Don't worry about that. We'll look at the leading term in each row. So in row one we'll see the leading term here is 3 and it has two zeros below it. There's nothing else below it, so that's good. In row 2, our leading term is negative 2 and it only has zeros below it, so it's perfect. In row 3, it's just all zeros. There's two zeros, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and now let's draw another one. Let's say we have... Uh, we, can do it, um, we can do one of a different shape again. Let's say maybe we'd have 2, 3, 4... Let's say this is equal to 5, uh, let's say 0, 0, 3, 1, and then let's put another row of zeros in here. All right, let's just close that up. Okay, so here we can look again. We'll see our leading terms here. We'll just make sure that in row 1, we have the leading term here is the 2, and it just has zeros below it. In row 2, the leading term here is the 3, and it only has a 0 below it. And the bottom row is all zeros, so that's okay. Perfect. And same here. Um, I guess these two both had rows of all 0, but if we went back to the original one, we, our 1 has just zeros below it, our 5 just has a 0 below it, and the 9 here is perfectly acceptable. That's no problem. And, oh, I don't know. Let's do one more. We have some space. So we might start seeing, let's say maybe 0, 1, 2, 3. Let's just say it's equal to 4. And then we can say 0, 0, 0, 5, and 6. And then 0, 0, 0, um, 0, and maybe negative 1, something like that. All right, so let's check this out. Leading variable in the first row just zeros below it. The leading variable in the second row, just zeros below it, so it's perfect. Um, another way, another approach you can kind of take to this is the staircase approach. And so I want to make sure all the zeros kind of line up in a staircase under the leading variables. So we look at it like this and like that. And you can see that all below the staircase that's formed by the leading variables, it's all going to be zeros. Here we can test it again. We can just put this in. And you see again all the below the staircase that's made with the leading variables is all zeros, and it works on different shapes of matrices too. So this is a good way to test. So you can draw it here. Make sure your leading variables are there, and again you're seeing all zeros. And lastly, you can just do it right here too, and you'll see that perfect. In fact, all of the space below the staircase made around the the leading variables is all zeros. So now the whole reason to do this is you want to identify these types of matrices because um, you're able to um, use back substitution if you go back to the system of linear equations if you do it in this way. So let's um, let's do this one here. Let's work through an example just so you understand. 
uh, we'll put the matrix as 3, 1, uh, 3, 1, 2. We're going to use this one. And then it was 0, negative 2, 8. You know what? Actually, I'm just going to draw this a little bit bigger. Excuse me. All right. So we have space. So let's use it. So, okay, again, 3, 1, 2. That's a 2. Uh, 0, negative 2, 8, and 0, 0, 0. Okay, so when we make our system of linear equations, it's going to look like this. Uh, let's say we have, um, let's use our variables as, let's say, x1, and our second variable would be x2. So when we write this out, we'll have 3x1 plus plus x2 is equal to 2. Now, in the next one, the next column, we're going to say is negative 2 x2 is equal to 8. And uh, if you remember, when we have the zeros here, they still fit in the system of linear equations, but it's kind of implied that they're not there. So technically, we would have this would be 0x1 minus x2 is equal to 8. And down to the bottom row, we would actually have 0x1 plus 0x2 is equal to 0. So that, that makes sense. That, that's, that's perfect. So we can use back substitution now. We can find out that um, negative 2, so we'll work this one out. We just say um, x2 is going to be equal to negative 4 because we divide both sides by negative 2. And then we can substitute this negative 4 into the top one, and we'll see what we get. So we would have 3x1 plus negative 4, or just minus 4, is equal to 2. So uh, here, let's, this is getting messy. Let's skip down here a bit. We'll go over here. So we have sorry 3x1. Uh, is equal to 6, and so x1 is equal to 2. So the solution to this system, uh, to the system of linear equations, we can write it like this. The solution is, uh, here we go, the solution <laughs> is equal to the vector negative 4 and 2. And this is because the x1, which is negative 4, and the x2 value, which is 2, would satisfy all three of these equations at the same time. And it also satisfies the bottom one because 0 times negative 4 plus 0 times 2 is still equal to 0.